uh, he's going to talk about superposition, uh, superposition states transformation and golden states. So go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction and thank the organizer, organizers uh, for this opportunity. Hello everyone again. Uh, today I will present uh, two joint works with Hussein Talha Shen and Ali Yildiz from Istanbul Technical University. The information uh, about these papers, uh, these related papers are given here. Uh, so uh, today in this talk, uh, I will talk, I will discuss uh, about superposition state transformations and the states uh, with maximum superposition states or golden states. Uh, so, uh, we know uh, coherence and superposition uh, are conceptually the same, but uh, they differ uh, within the resource theoretic, theoretical uh, formulations. Uh, to construct a resource theory of co coherence, we need to uh, we need a, a basis state. These uh, preferred or reference basis states are complete and orthonormal, but uh, in the case of superposition, these normalized and near independent basis states uh, are not necessarily uh, orthogonal. They can be non orthogonal. So, uh, in this sense, uh, we can say uh, that uh, coherence is a special kind of uh, superposition. Uh, also, uh, we have three elements uh, in a general quantum resource theory these are free states, free operations, and resource states. Uh, free states are the diagonal states in, in a given. In, for, a, for, a resource, for any resource theory, three uh, states are diagonal uh, states uh, with, with the given uh, basis states. So here, uh, rho uh, equal to pk, kk is the uh, incoherent uh, states uh, for coherence. And for superposition, this state is superposition three uh, states. Here, uh, pk over i uh, consists some probability distribution. Uh, so uh, any state for any resource theory, any state uh, which is not free, uh, is uh, a quantum resource. Uh, so the third element is free operations. Uh, in the case of coherence, uh, coherence is much, much richer than the resource theory of superposition. So we have several kinds of uh, free operations in the coherence theory. These are uh, maximally incoherent operations, the freezing incoherent operations, uh, strictly incoherent operations, or physically incoherent operations. In the case of superposition, we have three operations uh, and they are called superposition three. Uh, it means we cannot create uh, superposition under these uh, three operations. For example, uh, consider a cross operator Kn. Kn uh, rho, Kn dagger uh, must be free for all uh, rho free. Uh, so these are the uh, some basics of coherence and superposition. Here in this talk, uh, I discuss I will discuss two problems. One is state transformations, and the other one is all the states. In both uh, questions, uh, I I will discuss I will uh, focus on uh, pure superposition states. So pure superposition states given in this form. Uh, if this uh, anti-normalization condition is given. Uh, as shown here. Here, g i g i j is the element of the matrix, overlap matrix, or gram matrix. So uh, the first question uh, I want to discuss is superposition state transformations. Uh, in this task, we have an, we have an initial superposition state uh, psi in this form. And our aim is to transform this state into another uh, superposition state phi in this form. So we are looking for uh, what, uh, what are the uh, superposition free operators to achieve these transformations or what are the conditions for deterministic uh, transformations. So before proceeding, uh, let me remind you uh, the coherence transformations. As I mentioned before, uh, coherence is a special uh, kind of superposition. So it, it, it can be useful to remember coherence. In the case of uh, coherence transformations, we know that majorization condition, uh, which is proposed by Dua et al. in that paper, the majorization condition is a necessary and sufficient condition. It, uh, it means that the majorization conditions is satisfied between these two coherent states. 
then this transformation can be achieved with unit probability. To achieve these uh, transformations, we have some incoherent operations, the operators, uh, Kn, uh, and they are given in this form. Here, uh, F and K are some index functions or some permutations or uh, some unitary transformations, all of them the same. Also, we have some completeness relation. Uh, in the case of coherence, we, uh, a set of class operators is sufficient. We will see that in the case of superposition, we need another set of uh, superposition three uh, operators. So if we, uh, if we construct a proper way of uh, obtaining these uh, permutations or unitary transformations, then we can solve these D uh, equations and we can find probabilities. If you find probabilities, then we can obtain the grass operators. So uh, in order to obtain these permutations or unitary transformations in 2018, we proposed uh, a method for deterministic coherence transformations uh, for achieving these transformations. So in this uh, task, in this preposition state transformation task, we also benefit from these uh, results. So if you return to the uh, superposition state transformations, uh, we have uh, such uh, some superposition uh, free operators in this form. And this superposition free operators gives the uh, target states P with some probability Pn, which is given in this form. Uh, here, this is the crucial, crucial important point, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the set of class of uh, set of the class of quarters Kn gives us the target state with some probability. Also, we need another set of class of quarters uh, Fm uh, to achieve uh, to obtain the completeness relation. Also, here the this set uh, this class of quarters Fm. Uh, gives us nothing. So it is necessary only for completeness. Also, one crucial point is that here, uh, in order to uh, have such uh, class of uh, superposition free operators FM, uh, we need to uh, satisfy this inequality. In other words, KN, bigger KN, some of these operators must be uh, less or equal to identity. This is the uh, most important part of this uh, setting. Okay, so if we find index functions, we can find probabilities. If we, if we find probabilities, we can find class operators. If we, we find all of these terms, then we can get some idea about the conditions for deterministic superposition transformations. So uh, what are the results that we obtain? Uh, here, uh, contrary to the coherence, uh, majorization alone uh, is not uh, sufficient uh, condition for superposition transformations. We need another condition, co uh, we, which we call conditional completeness, or uh, abbreviated CLC. Uh, here, uh, in this part, there are state transformations here, uh, where uh, only the majorization condition is satisfied, and here. Only the conditions on condition, the condition on completeness is satisfied. For deterministic transformation, these two conditions uh, must satisfy at the same time. So, uh, what is majorization for superposition? We reformulate majorization for uh, superposition uh, in this form. Here, psi i tilde or phi i tilde are uh, given in this form. They uh, contain uh, overlap between, uh, between the basic states. Uh, so it is easy to see here if the basic states uh, have uh, zero overlap, this majorization conditions uh, reduce to the majorization condition for coherence. So this is the uh, majorization for superposition. The second condition, conditional completeness, is given in this form. Here, probability this PI is the uh, probability of the outcomes. Omega ij 
uh, are related with the coefficients of the final uh, superposition states. Here also we have a, a capital PI. This is the permutations for unitary transformations, and these are related with index functions. So uh, from the completeness in relation, we have these equations. If we solve these equations, we can find cross operators. Okay, uh, here uh, I want to give some examples for qubit systems. Uh, in the first two examples, uh, in the first one, uh, majorization is satisfied, but uh, the conditional completeness uh, is not. In the second example, uh, this time majorization is not satisfied, but the conditional completeness is satisfied. So these two transformations cannot be achieved with uh, unit probability. However, the third one, uh, this third, uh, in the third one, uh, third example, uh, both majorization and the condition on completeness is satisfied. So this transformation can be achieved with unit probability. To achieve these transformations, we have two cross superposition free operators, K1 and K2. If we apply this uh, K1 and K2, we can obtain these final states with some probabilities and totally with unit probability. Also, as I mentioned uh, earlier, we have another set of uh, three uh, superposition three operators, which we need to achieve con uh, completeness relation. Uh, also, uh, in fact, we don't have to construct explicit for explicit form of these cross operators. Uh, the only thing we need, uh, we need to have need to have is this one. Uh, K n K i dagger K i must be less or equal uh, than identity. If this uh, highlighted in red equation is satisfied, then we know that uh, we can find uh, a second set of superposition free operators. So for example, here I choose uh, F4 proto zero, but we do not need to choose this one. We can choose it uh, different from zero. Anyway. This kind of examples can be uh, diversified. Uh, if I uh, repeat again, uh, for superposition state transformations, majorization alone is not sufficient. We need another conditions. Uh, this is conditional completeness. If this both conditions is satisfied, then the transformation is uh, can be achieved uh, with probability. Also, uh, we need to check uh, whether these two conditions uh, reduce to uh, majorization or, or in the orthonormal. Uh, what, we, uh, what I mean with orthonormal limit, if the overlap is zero, then we can check the orthonormal limit. Uh, if we uh, look this limit, then we see that these two conditions reduce only one condition which is majorization for uh, coherence. Here uh, we have D minus one uh, inequality. Also this uh, inequality holds equality uh, for, uh, for the uh, orthonormal limit. This D minus one inequality uh, actually is same, are same uh, with these equalities. So we do not have uh, new equations. So in, uh, this, in the orthonormal limit, we only have uh, majorization condition. Again, here we have some index functions and our the second set of uh, three operators are all proto zero. We don't need them anymore. So uh, I also mentioned about, uh, about a paper uh, written uh, by us in 2018. In that paper, we propose a method to obtain these permutations. Uh, for example, uh, consider d equal to uh, three. Uh, we know that from majorization, the first co coefficients between initial and target states, this inequality, and the last coefficients be uh, between uh, initial and target states, these two uh, are, are already satisfied uh, from majorization. But the other coefficients, Side two and uh, two, 
it does not have a single relation. It is either this one or this one. So each for each one, we have a different uh, set of permutations. As I mentioned, uh, half, to, half can be obtained in these permutations. Uh, we propose uh, a method in this paper. So uh, I conclude this part uh, with this uh, explanation. In the second problem, I, I want to discuss about this uh, state with maximum superposition. Uh, we know that in the coherence case, uh, the maximally coherent states are well known and they are given in this form. But in the superposition case, uh, it is more challenging uh, due to the uh, non orthogonality. So uh, here our aim is to find a way to, you know, to change the uh, form of the superposition state or to find a way to show the existence of superposition, uh, maximum superposition state. So we have a proposition uh, which is based on a gram matrix. Let's say we have a gram matrix or overlap matrix uh, whose uh, elements uh, can be obtained uh, the basis states of the superposition, uh, resource theorem of superposition. Then a maximal state psi is necessarily an eigenvector of the, the, the overlap matrix uh, corresponding to the minimum eigenvalue lambda mean. And uh, here, the uh, component of the, this uh, eigenvector must be uh, 1 over d. Here, uh, please pay attention, we have psi i tilde. So we uh, previously defined this psi i uh, in this form. So uh, this condition also must be satisfied. So this is the, this is the uh, this is our uh, first proposition. From this proposition, we have a corollary. Uh, then the form of candidate maximal state we take by uh, proposition one. Uh, proposition one is as follows here, this one in the bracket notation. Uh, also, uh, as we mentioned here, these are the candidate states. If they, uh, if they must, if they want to be a, a golden state, this condition beside i tilde also must be one over d. This is also another uh, condition. So uh, to prove uh, all this uh, proposition and uh, corollary, we apply Rayleigh quotient. Uh, Rayleigh quotient is a mathematical tool to show the minimum and maximum value of, a, uh, of an eigenvector of gram matrix. For example, let uh, V and U be the eigenvector of gram matrix G, uh, where the first one corresponds to the lambda mean and the second one uh, corresponds to lambda max. Then let uh, X be the an arbitrary vector under the electric constraint, which is given in, in this one. Uh, for example, this is also a normalization condition. Then for these three vectors, uh, we have a Rayleigh condition guarantees this. So we, if we apply this Rayleigh quotient to some initial uh, superposition state and to some uh, final superposition state, we also want to uh, this initial state to be a maximum superposition state, we obtain this condition. So this is a, actually this is a necessary condition uh, for being a, a superposition, maximum superposition state. So uh, proposition one is the most general form of our proposition. So we uh, can uh, we can uh, we can make it easier with additional proposition. For uh, for for example, uh, in proposition two, uh, we consider the case qubit systems. Uh, for example, if we have uh, basis states C one and C two, and then we construct gram matrix, and, we, and then if we obtain uh, eigenvalue and eigenvectors of this gram matrix, then we will see that uh, the eigenvector which 
corresponds to the uh, new migrability is a maximum state for superposition. For example, consider here, let's say C1 and C2 equal to, they overlap equal to S, which can be uh, in the range minus one or one. If you obtain this uh, gram matrix eigenvalues, we obtain two eigenvalues. So it is obvious that we have two different uh, situations. For example, uh, lambda mean equal to one x for one minus s when s is uh, in the range zero and one, and lambda mine uh, is equals to one plus s when s is in the range minus one and zero. So for, for qubit systems, we have two uh, golden states, uh, and they are given in this form. Uh, once again, uh, I want to remark that uh, each one corresponding for some particular range of overlap. Okay, uh, so this this proposition is for qubit system. Uh, we can check uh, these uh, these states whether these states are maximally superposition or not with with some diagrams uh, which we plot by using L1 norm of superposition. Here, the dashed lines are the maximal uh, state, this case, and the other ones are some arbitrary states. Uh, we know that we write any uh, superposition state in this form. We can check uh, this, we can uh, change this eta, and we'll see whether we can obtain uh, a state which which contains more results or not. This diagram shows that it is not possible. So these states are maximum superposition states for two systems. So we can diversify these examples for v equal to two, v equal to three. Here we uh, we have a table. Uh, we have different kind of overlaps between the basic states. Uh, as I said, we can diversify. Uh, all these examples. For example, here, if we consider this case, we will obtain that this state in the range uh, where uh, S in the range uh, 0 and 1 or 2, this state is the maximum superposition state for uh, this choice of overlap. Okay. So, uh, last proposition is uh, about the D dimensional systems. Uh, for d dimensional systems with real, uh, real inner products, we have a superposition state in this one. So we can uh, look any overlap construction and check whether it has some uh, maximum superposition state or not. The crucial, the important point is that we can, uh, we have to check whether it has some lambda mean uh, and our, our uh, Psi i tilde equal to one over d. So both of them is, uh, if both of them is satisfied, then this state is possibly uh, the golden state. So in the last uh, one or two minutes, uh, let me add uh, some other works, which is also uh, important for uh, to show uh, the form of maximum states. This is a recent paper. On archive, I put on one archive uh, two or three weeks ago. Uh, here uh, I use uh, loading symmetric organization method. It is used, it is very uh, well known in quantum chemistry. Uh, for example, if we have a orthogonal or non orthogonal basis space, then we obtain gram matrix. Then by using this gram matrix, we can obtain a, a an orthonormal basis, which we call loading basis. Uh, so from an, uh, a non-orthogonal basis, uh, we can transform this into an uh, orthogonal basis. Uh, here, this transformation can be uh, finalized in this form. Uh, here, S is the overlap uh, matrix. Uh, Li is the loading basis. J, uh, C, I, uh, C, J uh, is the Phase of the superposition state. So, if we construct this in, in this form, uh, we obtain these equations. And if we continue in this form, uh, we obtain two equations. 
uh, if we apply a uh, lugged in symmetric orthogonalization to a uh, superposition state, we can obtain its corresponding form of a coherent state. So this is a coherent state, this is a superposition state, and uh, how uh, can we obtain this? We obtain this by Logan symmetric orthogonalization. Uh, what is important about Logan symmetric orthogonalization? Uh, we have a, uh, it is a powerful, powerful tool to obtain the form of the uh, maximally uh, superposition space. What I mean, uh, if you have, uh, if you have, if you have the initial, if you have uh, maximally coherent states, if you perform low symmetric orthogonalization in the opposite direction, you will conclude to obtain the golden states in the case of superposition. So you can apply this uh, for any dimension, for any construction. It is easy to see that Logan uh, symmetric organization uh, is the powerful uh, is a powerful tool uh, powerful tool to obtain uh, this transformation to see the existence of maximally superposition states. So to conclude, uh, here in this talk, I discuss uh, about deterministic superposition states transformations, and uh, I discuss all the state points. Uh, superposition. I also uh, show the results related to low symmetric orthogonalization, which promises the possibility of more. So there are also, as I say, coherence is a, uh, has a rich uh, literature, but superposition uh, is not. It is uh, relatively new if you compare with uh, coherence. So we have lots of open problems, for example, mixed state uh, superposition uh, transformation or superposition distillation, catalytic superposition distillation. All, also, uh, previously, uh, as we showed that uh, the effective role of uh, symmetric orthogonalization uh, to connect coherence and uh, superposition or to reveal the deeper connection, coherence and superposition uh, loading symmetric orthogonalization has an effective role. Uh, so uh, we can go in this way uh, for the uh, in the future directions. So thank you for time. Okay, uh, thank you, Gökhan, for this uh, very nice talk. Um, we have time for maybe one very quick question before uh, going to the next talk. Um, does anyone have questions? I think Christopher, Christopher have a um, relations, right? I think he might just be clapping. I think that's the clapping icon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, if there are, there are no more questions than that, I, I guess we can thank you. Okay. And, and, uh, thank you. We have thank to you. Thank move to the. Thank